It begins with our children. Rebuild the strength of our families. You know your culture, have a connection back to the land. As leaders, we've come together doing this work for our community members. It's a real sense of pride and ownership. Our communities know what's going to work. We can do better for ourselves. The social determinants of health in terms of living well means that our grandmothers and our aunties are taking the most important decisions about their family. Respected elders, the men and the women, are teaching their children and their grandchildren what they need to know to succeed in the two worlds in which we live. Nation rebuilding is so important, building upon the strengths we have. This concept of nation rebuilding is one where we're healing our people from the impacts of the residential school. Colonization, or the process of settlement, basically, have met us all at different places. You can look back on 150 years or 500 years of colonization know that there are simple practical things you can do to decolonize and to empower and to feel better. We're healing our people from trauma and grief, supporting our leadership to redevelop those institutions that routinely took decisions that Indian agents or social workers take for us today. Health service gaps for our people started with the Canadian Constitution of 1867 which outlined federal government responsibility for Indians and lands reserved for Indians and provincial responsibility for health services. The resulting jurisdictional gap or lack of clarity about responsibility for health services for First Nations has resulted in poorer quality of services for our people. In 2001, the BC Provincial Health Officer acknowledged the serious gaps in health outcomes for First Nations people compared to other British Columbians. With a need to improve services and close these gaps, it was clearly time for a change. We believed that we could provide better health services to our own people. Healing is a key priority for all of our communities, our nations, in order to be able to move ahead. Everybody in our communities needs some kind of healing. By signing the First Nations Leadership Accord, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, BC Assembly of First Nations, and the First Nations Summit committed to work together in the spirit of mutual respect and continued cooperation for the benefit of all First Nations in BC. In 2005, the tripartite partners committed to closing these gaps in quality of life for First Nations people. Through the Transformative Change Accord, the Leadership Council initiated a new relationship between First Nations in BC and both the BC provincial and the federal governments. The Accord document outlined the challenges and proposed a path forward. One year later, the Transformative Change Accord, First Nations Health Plan was finalized. It contained action plans and ways to measure progress. Most importantly, it was intended to be a living document. In 2007, the First Nations Health Council was created to achieve progress on the health plans and agreements and advocate for these changes. By June 2007, a number of First Nations communities in BC were already planning or delivering their own health services. The tripartite First Nations Health Plan committed BC to explore a new provincial model for First Nations health service delivery. The regional caucuses were created in 2008 as the venue for First Nations community leadership, health directors, and service partners to determine and shape priorities, policies, and improve health services. The First Nations Health Directors Association was formed, an association of health directors and technical health leads in First Nations communities in BC. The basis for a framework agreement on First Nations health governance built on the tripartite First Nations health plan to develop a new governance partnership and administrative arrangement for the delivery of health services to First Nations in BC. 
The 2011 consensus paper and resolution outlined BC First Nations perspectives on a new health governance arrangement and set out clear next steps for the First Nations Health Council to implement. At this time, BC First Nations also established the seven directives, fundamental standards and instructions for the new health governance relationship. The seven directives come from chiefs and leaders. It's important that we make sure that the work is community-driven and nation-based, that it increase First Nation decision-making, that it improve services, that we bring all of those decision-makers together that have a hand in the work of supporting healthy communities, that they're at the table so we collaborate and partner with others. We also want to make sure that we build First Nations capacity, that we make sure that governments at every opportunity invest in our communities and in our nations so that we can do the work for ourselves. In October 2011, the Tripartite Framework Agreement on First Nations Health Governance outlined the details of a transition of health service delivery from the federal government through Health Canada's First Nations Inuit Health Branch, Pacific Region, to a new First Nations Health Authority. The agreement set out the expectations to do better and provided funding certainty for the transfer. So it's important that our council, that chiefs and leaders understand what's in the agreement. Pretty powerful document. We signed it in a significant ceremony. It was a powerful moment when they all agreed that we could sign it. And the signing ceremony was very traditional in terms of process and powerful commitment. For every significant step in this journey of health, we've been able to mark it in ceremony. The tripartite agreement itself maps out the work, the development of the BC First Nations Health Authority. It also mapped out a whole series of subsequent work. So those things we were comfortable in reaching an agreement on, we did. For those things that we weren't certain about, we had to develop a plan to address it. This agreement is a combination of legal commitments, a plan, and setting out future negotiations for those issues that we didn't know enough about. The 2012 consensus paper and resolution outlined how First Nations in BC envisioned their own model of health service delivery through the First Nations Health Authority. The 2012 Five of Five Regional Partnership Accords were signed between First Nations through the regional caucuses, regional health authorities, and witnessed by the First Nations Health Authority. These agreements outlined community-driven priorities and solutions to close service gaps for First Nations accessing regional health authority services in their territories. In October 2013, the transfer of health services from Health Canada to the First Nations Health Authority began. This health transformation First Nations in BC are involved in now means we can reclaim our ways of being well. We now can engage directly with communities. Reclaiming who we are, reclaiming our responsibility to look after the people and to look after the land. We're doing things on our terms that are determined or shaped by our traditional teachings and values. Through health and wellness, we're helping to lead or demonstrate that there can be change. The First Nations Health Council consists of three representatives from each of the five health regions of the province. First Nations in each region are responsible for appointing representatives to the council and to establish their own community-driven, nation-based process for the region, such as a seven-nation assembly in the interior, three family groups of Vancouver Island, and three sub-regions of the north. The First Nations Health Council provides political representation for communities and advocacy on a community level. This Council of 15 appoints the First Nations Health Authority Board of Directors and are considered the members of the First Nations Health Authority, while their role is focused on advocacy and not service operations. The First Nations Health Directors Association provides technical advice to First Nations Health Authority. There's other documents in here, including our mandate statement, oversee the transformation of the health system. 
make progress on the social determinants of health and advocate, advocate, advocate. That marching order set out clearly in this work. Commitments that we had made around this work in health comes from a resolution and it gives us clear direction to listen to concerns that come directly from communities, from the grassroots. And so that's my role as an advocate, to be that voice. Work that we're doing at First Nations Health Council is work that those old chiefs would appreciate. Taking that from a tribal level or a nation level to a province-wide level. And I know that they'd understand what we're doing is believing in our people until they can believe in themselves. And we're doing those things that used to be done for us or done to us, we're now doing those things. For governance decision-making, community guidance is clarified through the regional caucuses, a process of dialogue around consensus documents and at conferences. At the regional caucuses, First Nations chiefs and political representatives come together with health directors and technical leads alongside the First Nations Health Council, Health Directors Association, and Health Authority. Their input at regional caucuses flows to the First Nations Health Council, First Nations Health Directors Association, and First Nations Health Authority. The First Nations Health Directors Association has its own technical advice process to engage health directors on health service improvements. When conversations are held and we develop guides or principles out of them, they become part of our direction. And one of the things we've always done is work so that we're never leaving anyone behind. We're there to make sure that the interests of the communities are represented and protected and that our voices are heard. The First Nations Health Governance Structure also includes the Tripartite Committee on First Nations Health a table composed of representatives of the First Nations Health Council, First Nations Health Authority, First Nations Health Directors Association, senior federal and provincial government representatives, the chief executive officers of the province's health authorities, and the office of the BC Provincial Health Officer and First Nations Health Authority Chief Medical Officer, as well as regional technical observers. It's the forum for coordinating and aligning service improvements and planning efforts between the partners, informed by First Nations communities through the First Nations Health Council, First Nations Health Directors Association, and First Nations Health Authority. Through the Health Council work, by bringing nations together, by bringing communities together, supporting each other, one voice becomes five voices. If those five voices speak in synchronicity, speak from the heart and speak with one common message, people do hear us. Working together to support each other, but not at the point where we lose ourselves in these processes. And that's what's really important in all of this. And again, why the number one directive? Community-driven, nation-based. In our Sequip culture, women were the leaders. They made all of the decisions. So I look forward to doing more work with women so that our traditional governance system that we had before can strengthen our current processes. As leaders, we can tell that the future is going to be different. Through the regional caucus engagement process, it was made clear leadership must support the deepening of work around health to include all the areas that need to be addressed for our people to be well, also known as the social determinants of health. The March 2016 Memorandum of Understanding between the First Nations Health Council in British Columbia through the Ministry for Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation set out a pathway to partnership on the social determinants of health. Income and social status is a determinant of health, social support networks, health services, health practices and coping skills. Culture is a determinant of health. When we actually understand our language, we know how to govern. If we want healthy people, then that's what we need to focus on. The vision statement for the First Nations Health Council is healthy, self-determining, vibrant BC First Nations children, families, and communities. In February 2017, a federal commitment was made to make progress on the social determinants of health through a memorandum of understanding with Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada. 
In July 2018, the Tripartite Partners solidified a partnership to improve mental health and wellness services and achieve progress on the determinants of health and wellness through a third Memorandum of Understanding. This agreement opened the door to new flexible funding for communities, improving First Nations treatment centers and building more in BC. It's a commitment to long-term approaches to mental health and well-being for our people. When a person needs help, they should be able to get that help right away. There's so many things that we've suffered and struggled through. Inherently feeling shame for so many things and not even understanding why. That's not vibrant. You see a lot of addictions in our communities and it isn't the drug that we need to consider or the alcohol. It's what are the underlying issues and that all gets encompassed in mental health. We recognize the damage that is done, but also the resilience of our people. Healing from those decades of trauma, understanding the vision of the First Nations Health Council, and someone chuckled and said, how did vibrant get in there? What does vibrant mean? Somebody who's vibrant? There's light around them. We're coming from them. They're not lost in shadows. Encouragement that I was given is to always remember who you are and where you come from. When you have a strong sense of identity, you're strong mentally and well-balanced. What we aspire to is part of something that our ancestors lived. I lived it. And our hereditary chiefs, they were taught those kind of things to look after their ha-hoti. Ahutli is land, resources, and people. To rediscover, renew, or refresh our culture, and those teachers are important to keep us grounded and move forward. It's been exciting work because we get to do it our way, grounded in ceremony, hear from the people, incorporate our culture, making sure that services that we promote or build are culturally appropriate. You share the work and you share the teachings. Really take to heart that we're here to work for people. We want to draw upon our culture, our ceremonies, our rituals, our beliefs, that when we need medicine for our spirit, it's also medicine for our, our body, our mind, and our heart. But when we need surgery, we want the best surgeon that we can get. So ideally, we want the best of the two worlds in which we live. And so that's the work of the First Nations Health Authority find that way of supporting nations achieve the recognition, respect, practice of Indigenous cultures and spiritual practices together with modern medicine. All of us move forward, become self-determining in that true sense. A real role is to actually help change the world. And that allows people to make their own realities at home. We want every nation to define what a healthy, vibrant youth is. So we want to start counting things that are positive. What does it really mean? And let's invest in it. One of the biggest things I look forward to is understanding how we all look as vibrant people. Mm -hmm.